Hello everybody, my name is Maureen O'Connor from Quilters Heaven in Northbrook, Illinois, and I am the Opinionated Quilter. Today's episode is going to be part two of On Point Quilt Layouts, but first, my opinions. In my first episode, I said I like to do things efficiently, and one thing that I have found is when people are joining strips, whether it's for bindings or borders, on a 45 degree angle, people do it less efficiently than they could. Here is an example. I always say cut off your, uh, your salvages and not have them in your quilt. If you lay your pieces together like this, you cannot see from here where that corner is. And that's where you want your sewing to come out. If you leave your salvages on to start with, and overlap so that they're not in your project. You can see the where exactly where you have to start. It's right at this angle and exactly where you have to come out here. In both cases, you come back to your cutting mat and you cut off all this as waste. Here, you come back and cut off all this and then cut off this. So here you've cut off the salvages and cut off the waste. Here you do it all in one step. To me, much more efficient and you get the addition uh, benefit of visibility. No visibility, great visibility. So that's my first tip. The second thing I'd like to show you is sewing quilt backing together. Let me grab my sample. This is the fabric I'm going to sew together for a backing. Your quilt, say, is more than 40 inches wide, so you can't get it out of one width of fabric. So you have to sew two together. Most people would cut this in half and sew it together. Rarely do they meet up exactly even. You take the fabric as it comes off the bolt. You fold it in half. Now, mind you, this only works on non-directional fabric. If you did this on directional fabric, you'd have one face up and one face down. So unless that's what you're going for, only do this on non-directional fabric. So now I've got it folded in half. And there's only one place in this stack of four pieces of fabric where it's right sides together. It's the center two. So I'm gonna take the center two and I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine and sew it together. Again, remember, we don't want our salvages in our quilt. So I am going to use a very wide seam allowance so that I can have at least a half an inch beyond the salvages, and then I can go back and cut off the salvages later. Off to the sewing machine. Now I am using the edge of my plate, my needle plate, as my guide for my seam allowance. And you can see that gives me a nice amount from the edge of the salvage into the sewing. Forgot to put down my dual feed. So I should have used a contrasting thread so that you can see this better. I will remember to do that next time. Um, but I did just sew all the way down and all the way off the, the piece of fabric. So now I have a piece that looks like this that's all sewn down the edge. So now you're gonna take your, your fabric and you're gonna fold it in half this way. And now we're gonna open it up. So now I'm going to lay the ruler just on the edge of this fold and I'm going to slice it off. You could take a scissors and just cut it. I always find the rotary cutter and ruler faster 
Either way works, whatever you like. Dog bed pile scrap. And now you have your fabric sewn together and this meets exactly at the edge and it meets exactly at this edge. And now we have to slice off the salvage, easily done. And then I'm gonna press it open and your backing will be ready for your quilt. Now, why is it important that the edges are even? Because oftentimes you will sew the fabric together, cut it in half, sew it together, and it doesn't meet and you're, you know, an inch, inch and a half off. Does that make a difference? It does if you're taking it to a long armor. And the reason is we mark the center of the backing to put it on to the long arm. So I've made a little sample here. And say this is one half of your backing and this is your other half. This is starting at the beginning and this is coming off the edge. Now this is a little bit drastic, but it's so that I can show you what happens. Whether you're an inch off, inch and a half, or about four that I have here. I marked the center of the yellow and I marked the center of the blue. And if I put that on the center of my long arm and that on the center, you can see very clearly that it's on crooked. So that's why you need this edge even with this edge. So if your, your um, edges don't meet up, square it off before you give it to your long armor so that your quilt back isn't crooked. So that's enough of my tips and tricks today. Let's get back to the on point quilt layouts. This is one here that I just recently did. This is a panel from In the Beginning Fabrics. It's called Jungle Friends. And I decided to put it on point. The panel has nine squares in it. And for some reason, I have an aversion to square quilts. I don't want to set it three across and three down. That's just kind of boring to me. So I wanted to put it on point and I get to use eight of the nine. So I had to lose one. They're all so cute. It was a very difficult decision, but I picked this guy here. So when we decide to put the quilt on point, the, the quilt block goes like this. So every one of these animals would be on their side if we put them on point just like this. The way to make them straight again is to make them a square and a square block. And as you can see here, this is my square. So it's a center square with four triangles on the outside, which makes the square and a square block. So the first thing I do is look at how big um, the square is, and I try to match it to the center square um, using Deb Tucker's methods. And in this one, I had to use her biggest one, the large square and a square for the 12 inch square. I'm going to show you on this one. This I found these leftover squares in a basket in one of my stashes. It, it's an old panel called What Do the Animals Say? And we had made a store sample and I had made a, a quilt for my daughter to give to a friend of hers who was having a baby. So I had all these leftover squares and nothing to do with them. And I decided after making this one that this is how I could use these squares. So what size am I going to make these squares from the um, squares in the panel? So I go to my Deb Tucker rulers and I say, what size can I make this? Here's the square for the six inch finished blocks. 
Well, I'd have to cut off an awful lot more for that. Here's the square for the seven inch blocks. Don't have enough for that. So I went to her half inch ruler. So this covers um, one and a half up to eight and a half blocks. And here's where the center squares are marked. So I'll lay this on here. And looky here, six and a half inch block center square works perfect for this. So I use this ruler to cut down all my blocks for that quilt. And all these instructions that I'm talking about are all in her ruler. She's got the regular square and a square. She's got the square and a square half inch, which I used for this one. She has the large square and a square or square squared that I used for the one hanging. So on the ruler, it tells you for the um, triangles on the side, it gives you all the measurements of how big to cut the squares. So I'm doing the six and a half inch, so I needed four and a half inch squares. So to get around one block, I need two squares. So I would go ahead and I would cut a four and a half inch square, cut it on the diagonal, and then I would take them and sew them top and bottom and side to side. And then I would have a unit that looks like this. So I would press it better than this is pressed now. But then you take your ruler and it's got all the marks of where the intersection should be. Got it on wrong. There we go. So I want the six and a half. So the six and a half should be here. Six and a half here. Six and a half here. And six and a half up here. And then I'm going to grab my rotary cutter. And I'm going to go ahead and trim these down. And all the instructions, again, are in her ruler. Then turn it around, same thing, six and a half, six and a half. There we go. And we keep repeating until you have all the blocks you need. So I did go over this the last time. I'll do it quick again. This is the actual drawing. I draw everything out before I do an on-point quilt. This is the actual drawing I did for that quilt. And I had 12 that are bordered in the green. They're the A block. And I had six that are bordered in the yellow. Those are the B block. And then I just follow this to lay it out. Very simple. Now let's do something with this panel. It has 15 squares on it. Let's first decide how big we're going to make the squares. I'm going to take the ruler that tells me how big the center square should be, and I'm going to lay it down on one of the squares to decide how big to make them. And if I hold the center square for eight inch finished blocks, it looks like it's gonna be pretty darn perfect. So it tells you that you should cut these six and a quarter big right here on the ruler. So we're gonna cut these out at six and a quarter. Now, how are we gonna lay them out? You've got 15 squares. 15 is probably the closest number to doing this layout, because we're not gonna put another seven squares in the center here. We're not gonna put another five in. And I don't think we wanna go down to just the eight as in the one hanging. That would be wasting way too many squares. So what I would do if I was going to do this quilt layout, I would take out one of these squares, decide which one you don't wanna use. Then you have 14. 
if you make the four corner squares something different and put the 14 in the middle, that would turn out to be a pretty terrific quilt. You could, for the uh, four corner blocks, do a four patch or a nine patch, some sort of piece block, or there's companion fabric to this uh, panel. So you could just take a solid square of a companion fabric or just a solid square. You can really do whatever you want. So why don't you get creative and make up a quilt from a panel? Stop at your local quilt shop, ask what they have. And if you are struggling with um, color combinations for the setting triangles, just ask your quilt shop to help you. All you have to do is say, yes, I like this, or no, I don't like that. And no matter how many times you say you don't like something, our feelings aren't gonna be hurt. We will just keep pulling things till we find something that you like. So thanks for joining me for On Point Quilts. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. You can put any comments or questions in the comment section. And if there's any topics you'd like me to cover in the future, please put them there as well. And I will do my very best to cover those topics in the future. You can also check me out on Instagram at Quilters Heaven Inc. Thanks again for watching. My name is Maureen O'Connor from Quilters Heaven, and I am the Opinionated Quilter.